Hello everybody, welcome to the Chenzor Dynasty. My name is James Chen, aka J Chenzor, and you are watching twitch.tv slash J Chenzor. Today, what I am planning to do is go over the new Samurai Showdown, which is coming out very soon in a few days. And if it is out already for you guys watching this on YouTube, hopefully you've come here to learn some stuff about Samurai Showdown. I'm gonna be trying to do a video here where I demonstrate a lot of the basics and things that you would expect out of the game, as well as trying my best to answer questions in the chat. Again, this is day minus five, day minus four for this game. So obviously we're gonna be learning a lot of stuff. People are gonna ask me about tears and all these things like that. Uh, I mean, you can ask me, I can give my opinion. I'm not going to say that any of that stuff has any sort of bearing until we know for sure and get our hands on the game and everyone plays. But I know you guys want to hear all about the mechanics right away instead of here what, listening to me ramble. So I, let's do that right away. We're gonna start here and I'm gonna go with Haumaru. So Haumaru, no matter how you shake it, he is a really, really good character to start with. He is a very good basic beginning character and I think he's gonna remain very strong in this game. He just has all the tools that you need. So if you want to start with him and worry about him not being strong, I wouldn't do I wouldn't worry about that. He's a good character to start with and to learn the game. So let's go ahead and start talking about the system mechanics right away. And obviously the first thing that you're gonna learn about a fighting game is the movement. Movement is always the most important thing, right? Movement is always, always, always the most important thing. So the first thing that you're gonna figure out when you actually try to walk back and forth is that the walk speed is slow. The walk speed is very, very slow. In fact, if you're familiar with Street Fighter V, it's gonna feel like everybody's M. Bison. And you know, at first this is gonna be hard to deal with. You're gonna be like, why can't I move? And this feels really sluggish. But as you play the game, you'll start finding out that the movement speed isn't as important as well as the fact that sometimes the slow speed can actually be good because it gives you a little bit more precision on your distances. Plus, a lot of the movement options are going to uh, take care of the movement problem. For example, everybody has a run. You know, has, everybody has a good backdash. And the other thing too is, if everybody had stubby normals, this would be a problem, but you know, a character like Haumaru is gonna hit you with a standing C from that far away. So you're gonna find out that range is usually uh, pretty good. I mean, especially if you're, if you're coming from a Street Fighter background and you're used to kind of shorter normals. The movement speed is not gonna be as much of a problem as you think as you get into the game. So while it may feel awkward at first, I wouldn't worry too much about it. However, uh, as with men, every other fighting game, there's the standard concept of standing and crouching. So you can obviously stand and crouch. And so you've got crouching attacks and standing attacks. These are all the A button. This is the B button. And this is the C button over here, right? So you've got different standing and crouching attacks for every character. Same thing with kick as well. Uh, before I get into a little bit more of the movement, uh, I, wanna do, I do want to talk about what the buttons are. Samurai Showdown is a four button game. Four button game. There's light slash, there's he medium slash, there's heavy slash. <laughs> Oops, and I just killed him in like four heavy slashes. And then the last button is kick. This may be different if you're familiar with Samurai Showdown 5 Special. This is different because they had light, heavy, kick, and then a movement button. There is no movement button in this version of Samurai Showdown. It is a more like one of the other Samurai Showdowns. I think it was three or four that had this button layout, which was light, medium, heavy, and kick. And everything else can be done through combinations of just those four buttons. Although there are a whole bunch of different button combinations that you can do in the game, you can see they're all doable with the existing four buttons. So you can set shortcuts, but you don't actually need to if you wanna play with all four of the buttons. Now, having said that, let's go back to the movement a little bit and let's talk about the next thing, which of course is, um, which is basically, uh, what do they have over here? Oh, they've got the dashes here. 
So uh, I'm going off of a list that I have written down over here. So dashing in this game is uh, going to be probably your main movement option. You can ta double tap forward to move forward and double tap back to back dash. And you'll notice that back dash, it's going to be different with every character, as is the running speed. Characters like Earthquake don't have a lot of running speed, right? So uh, Haomaru has a good running speed. So different characters will have different running speeds. They'll have different backdash speeds and backdash distances. But this is a very standard fighting game mechanic as well. You know, almost every fighting game has a dash forward and a dash back mechanic. The whole thing about dashing forward, however, is that you do continue to run. So if you are used to something, say, like Street Fighter, it's different. The Street Fighter just has the little fixed dash, whereas in like Guilty Gear has the run. So something like Guilty Gear is what you're going to be more used to. Uh, also, while you're running, you'll notice that there is a little bit of delay when you stop running. So when I stop running and hit back like this, like... I can still get hit right there. So I'm hitting back before I, well, oh wow, okay. So maybe not even that much of a delay. So maybe even though it looks like a delay, oh, you know what it is, the, what I, what I, the way that it works is that you, once you run a certain amount of distance, you can cancel it right away into whatever you want. That's what it is. So when you run a certain amount of distance, you can cancel it right away. But you'll notice that if I dash forward and hit back right away, I can't stop right away. So no matter what, if you do dash, if you start your run, you have to commit to it a little distance. So in other words, if I dash and try to stop right away, I will get hit. So while this is an amazing offensive option, if you predict the opponent is going to run at you and you swing out a standing C, like, uh, where is my standing? Uh, I don't think this one is configured correctly. Let's do this really quick. Uh, light, medium, heavy. There we go. And hit will be there. So if you predict your opponent's going to run at you, you, you can throw out a heavy attack. And if you do, there's nothing they're going to be able to really do about it at for now, we'll get into that a little bit because there kind of is something you can do, but you can catch people running at you by swinging a long range attack from like this range and catch them at the start of their run. So that is one of the dangers of running. You have to commit to at least a small distance before you can stop. Now, I can't even crouch during this time either. Now, the one thing that you will note though is that you can attack so during this first phase here, where you are committed to the run, I can still attack. And not only that, but I can still jump. In fact, I can jump so fast that you don't even see the run even happening. The key thing to note, however, is that running and jumping does not increase the distance of your jump like it does in a lot of other games. If you're used to a Marvel game, if you're used to a Guilty Gear game, if you run and jump, it can affect your momentum. That is not the case here in Samurai Showdown. Running and jumping will just give you whatever momentum your jump was supposed to have. So if you run and jump, you're just gonna have the standard uh, momentum in there. So that is one thing to note about running. And again, as I mentioned, you can cancel into attack. And uh, although I showed that everybody had standing and crouching attacks with every button, everybody also has a running attack. Everybody's running attack with all four different buttons will produce a different attack. And one thing I did forget to mention about the four different buttons, there's light slash, heavy, uh, medium slash, and heavy slash. And there's also kick, right? So there's the kick button as well. And this is going to be, although at first you're going to want to sit here and hit heavy buttons all day because it's just cool to slash people with your swords and hit them and everything please do not overlook the kick buttons the kick buttons are going to be very integral to your gameplay and we'll get into that a little bit later when we start talking about things like the flex but every character has a standing kick and a crouching kick but they also have a forward plus kick as you can see this is neutral kick in uh standard fighting game terminology this is 5k 
in, in other words, use the numbers as like looking at the number pad uh, on your keyboard, on your computer, and all nine directions of a joystick are represented by that number while you're facing towards the right. So 5K means your joystick is not being pushed in any direction, AKA neutral. So 5K is this standing kick like this. 6K, which is forward plus kick, will make me do this. And then there's down, there's crouching kick, or 2K as you might want to call it. And every character also has offensive crouch plus kick, AKA 3K. So hold down and forward and hit kick and they will have a different move. Usually it's a short range kick, a short range low attack if you do 2K, and a longer ranged low attack if you do 3K. For most characters, that is going to be true. So there you go. So that is uh, buttons. And as I said, on the movement, if you dash and hit a button, you will do a dash attack. Everybody has a specific dash attack. So, for example, Haumaru's dash, dashing middle slash is this, whereas if I just do far slash, it's this. Another thing to mention about the buttons is that, uh, like a lot of older school games, you have a difference between close range buttons and far range buttons, aka proximity buttons. So if I hit medium slash from over here, I do this stab, but if I go up close to Yashimaru, Yashamaru, all of a sudden it turns into a different attack. In fact, I'll make him jump so you can see it. It looks almost just like my, uh, my dashing attack, actually. In fact, I think it basically is his dashing attack. He swings differently over here. But if I go back over here, that same button makes me do this. So at close range, light punch makes me do an elbow. But I'm sorry, light slash makes you do an elbow, but outside here I actually swing. Far uh, heavy slash is this big old monster, but close up, I have a close up slash here like this. Now, um, I do believe that some characters might even have some close up crouching normals, but uh, don't quote me on that right now. Uh, we'll t uh, I'll see if I can find out more information about that. Uh, for you guys later on. But keep in mind that there are proximity normals. I don't think kick has proximity normals, so I don't think it matters what range you are. Kicks are always going to be the same. There is no such thing as a close-up kick and a far kick. So that's uh, the way that the normal, that's the way that the normal buttons work in this. Everyone also has four different jump attacks in uh, four, if you jump forward or backwards and hit all four of the buttons. Now, uh, neutral jump, some characters actually have different neutral jump animations uh, for their attacks. I don't think Haumaru is one of them. I think Yashimaru, Yashamaru is one of them, however, because if I jump forward in heavy slash, he does this kind of upward swing like this, but if I neutral jump, you see that I actually do a downward slash. So some characters actually have different jump attacks in their neutral jump compared to when they uh, do forward or backwards jump. So keep that in mind. A little bit of an old school style right there, but um, you know, it's, it's, it's good. I like it because Samurai Showdown is definitely a very old school game. So back to dashing a little bit. You know, we talked about dashing, how everybody has uh, dashing attacks here, right? So it looks like uh, dashing attacks just kind of pick one of your normals or just pick a move that exists and lets you use those moves instead. So for example, that's gonna be, you'll see later on, my, my swordless uh, punch, but that we'll get into that a little bit later. So everybody has a dash attack. As I said, although you can't cancel the very start of your run, with a defense or a crouching. You can cancel it with a jump right away, and you can cancel it with a button right away. So, uh, and again, that button though will always be a dash attack. If you want to say, for example, do dash up and then neutral B like that, you can only dash that fixed amount of distance and then hit back and then B. You can't 
you can't expect right here to do dash and then B, like to do this B, or dash into far C. Like if you want to do dash into far C, you actually have to let yourself run until you can stop and then hit C after you finish stopping. Otherwise, there's no way to do immediate far dash C as far as I know, unless there's some sort of crazy pre-jump frames tech that we're gonna find that doesn't seem to be working for me at all. So there you go, right there. Okay, so um, the other thing that I wanna mention is that with back dash, however, you cannot do anything out of back dash. I cannot jab, I cannot jump, I cannot crouch, I cannot block, I can't do anything. So backdash is how you would expect it for most backdashes. It's a commitment. It is something that you have to basically, uh, once you do it, you're stuck doing it for a while. What are backdashes good for? Well, backdashes are good for a lot of things. So for example, if your opponent tries to throw you, for example, um, let's set this to uh, throw over here. So for example, if your opponent tries to throw you, you can actually backdash away from the throw and punish with the C button and get a ton of damage. Uh, I have not played online yet. I don't know if the servers actually are online yet. So uh, I don't know if that's actually something that we can do yet. So, but yes, 30% one hit, and that's not even the that's not even the the the, the start of it. Tunes in, it can get so much worse. Ah, oh, okay, so they are. So the servers are online. So I'll try some later bit. I'll try some online later bit later on, maybe uh, on a future stream or something like that. But in any case, uh, backdash cannot be done anything. Now, is there invincibility in backdash? Uh, whoops, wrong button. I want to do, why is he doing that? Medium slash, heavy slash, kick. There we go. I want him to do this. There you go. So is there invincibility on backdash? Uh, that was not a good test. Uh, not doesn't look like it okay there's a little bit at the beginning it looks like yeah okay so the very start of it has a little bit of backdash so if you if there's a move that uh, has a low enough active frames where this game most moves have pretty hefty active frames uh, you can backdash through stuff a little, but one of the key things to note about getting hit by this, even even as you do get hit out of the backdash, at least you're getting hit airborne, but you're still gonna take a lot of damage because getting hit by combos is not that big of a deal. So, I mean, is uh, is not a, a, a common thing in this game. You're not gonna see a lot of, uh, you're not gonna see a lot of uh, you know, people back that people landing big old combos. So even if you get hit out of the air, if you get hit out of the air with a standing C, your life's gonna suck anyway, right? So you're still gonna lose a ton of damage anyway. So back dash dashing as a form of invincibility, not really very reliable. Use it more for movement than anything. So back dash into punish is usually a, a very powerful system to defeat very, very laggy moves so there you go oh okay so tubaware confirmed it mr wizard said it's on as well so yeah when i'm done with a lot of this i'll try to play some online matches then uh so that's basically backdash movement option very very good movement option here so uh 